Hello, this is Chris, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to put on a Corvette C7 brake caliper onto a 4th gen Trans Am. Okay, so let's get something clear right up front. Don't make the same mistake that I made. J55 is a package for multiple different kinds of cars. So on a Corvette, you have a C7 uh, Z51 package. And you also have the J55 package, which is specifically the larger brake, caliper, and rotor. The Cadillac ATS-V has J55 as well, which is quote-unquote the bigger caliper and rotor as well. But uh, the bigger caliper is the uh, not the same caliper as the Corvette J55 package. So... Um, Make sure that you're reading your part numbers correctly and uh, you're getting the right ones that you want. If you want the uh, extremely large 13.6 inch caliper, uh, then get the Corvette Z51 J55 caliper. Or if you want the slightly smaller one, the 12.6 inch that'll fit underneath the 17 inch wheels, then you want the Corvette base caliper JL9 or the Cadillac ATS V. J55, which fits a 12.6 inch rotor. Take a look at this beauty. Brembo, boy it's heavy. Four pistons, there's where our screws are gonna go. Bleeders on both sides. It does not have that connecting tube on the bottom, that's all built in, so don't have to worry about that. And this puppy is pretty heavy. Haven't weighed it yet, but it weighs a bunch. There's our bolt that goes along with it. On the top it takes 21 millimeters. The shank right here is 14, but we're going to use a half inch drill bit and then a 9 16th drill bit to drill out the holes to make them a little bit bigger. And 9 16th is about 0.2 millimeters bigger than that shaft, so that's not too much. And uh, that'll leave us a little bit of extra play uh, to be able to um, make sure everything fits properly and it won't move around. Have a look at these nice centric brake rotors. Black painted in the center. Even black painted on the edges and inside the veins. No rust going on there, man. That's awesome. It's 12.6 inches, which is just a little bit bigger than the old discs. So we get a little increase in size, but not too much. But that's not what we're all about. We're about the new calipers. So let's take a quick look at the other parts for the kit here. We've got our slide pin and spring kit there. Four slide pins. So this will take care of the whole car. Here's our part number in case you wanted to see it. I bought two boxes of those just so I had some extras. Here's the actual brake caliper, uh, brake pads themselves. And uh, I'm going to try some EBCs. Yellow stuff this time. My friend has some on his autocross car and he likes them a lot. I like Carbotec a lot also, but I'm going to give these a shot. Just look real nice. All right, for my street wheels, I'm going to need to run some spacers. So, uh, using the part numbers on the forum, got these nice iBox spacers. I got uh, two sets of them so I can do all four wheels and they're all spaced out evenly. They come with a nice set of studs, which aren't quite as long as the ARP ones, um, but might do you okay if you want to use those instead. You probably get another, probably get another uh, half or three quarters of an inch on the uh, stock studs on uh, on these that come with the kit here. I've got the old disc off this hub here, and here is the one hole that we're going to be enlarging. And here's the other hole that we're going to be enlarging. And uh, although with the disc off and the caliper off, the old caliper off, just off to the side there, you can get straight in to these holes here. You're really not going to have enough length on the drill to get the bit very far in there, if at all, just because your wheel hub and studs are in the way. So you're probably going to have to take off the wheel hub. So I'm going to do that and be right back. Okay, so the wheel hub is off. And we'll be ready to uh, start drilling these holes bigger as soon as I get my uh, drill over here. But first, we're going to make sure that this spindle is uh, perfectly upright. So uh, when I'm drilling, I'm not drilling on an angle. I've got this uh, nifty 
uh, digital and analog uh, angle finder and I'm going to put it on here. Might be a little hard to read here. It looks like we're reading 89.7 degrees. So uh, that is pretty well vertical for me. It's just a couple tenths of a degree difference aren't going to matter for this application. So this is perfectly upright. When I drill perfectly horizontal, should go right through those holes, uh, right the, in the direction we need them to and not be angled or offset at all. So I like to do everything as precisely and methodically as I can, uh, but I don't have a drill press. So I made up this weird little jig for my hand drill that I'll be able to use to keep it flat and in the same orientation. So my drill has a bubble level on the top of it, and this is a good old Craftsman uh, half inch corded drill. Um, and I shimmed it up so it sits perfectly level on this piece of wood, and then I'm gonna stack up uh, you know, some other pieces of wood or something to get this to the right height that I need, and it'll, I'll just be able to slide it in and out real easily, and I won't accidentally start moving it on uh, bad up and down angles when I'm trying to drill my hole. Okay, I've got my drill on my leveling platform stacked up on a bunch of cinder blocks and some pieces of wood. Right, it's a little ghetto, but it's going to keep it level the whole time. I'm not going to have to uh, hold it up while it's drilling, and I can go nice and slow and just push it in real gently. Okay, I've uh, used both drill bits, the half inch and the 9 16 and uh, man, good thing I was using the big drill here because it literally took no time at all, just a couple seconds boring into each one, uh, you know, although I kept the RPMs really high so it didn't get bogged down. Got bogged down a couple times. Got my giant bolt to test it with. Gonna fit it in through the back. Fits really nicely through there. Just has an itty bitty tad bit of play on the back side, but I think that is right on. So I'll uh, stack this little contraption higher and do the top one, and uh, we'll go to the other side and do the same for that. I'm not gonna make a video of that. You know, you see how it goes here. Uh, we'll just skip to the next part then. Okay, so I finished drilling the holes for the passenger side and just had to do a test fit with this right away. So you can see, I only put the bolts through just a little bit, but everything lined up real nice. No uh, sticking, no having to jiggle it around or anything. Went on there nice and smooth. And uh, just give you a little close up of that there. A couple of different angles so you can see it. And uh, probably take a few minutes to uh, put a bolt on that wheel hub again and test fit with the rotor just to see how it's looking. Hey guys, so I'm working on a test fit. I have the wheel hub back together. I have the uh, Strano parts slash uh, Rocketman original uh, C5 SKF X tracker hub adapter. So I'm using Corvette wheel hubs on my Trans Am. So there's this spacer plate um, that attaches to the three bolt Corvette wheel and adapts it to the four bolt uh, F body hub. Um, but you see, He's also built in some nice little uh, standoffs so you can put um, brake cooling ducts on there. Now the one on the top is okay and the one on the bottom is really close. Um, um, there's literally just two millimeters of space in between there. I thought I was gonna have to cut that little ear off, uh, but I'm not. It's really close. I think it's, I think it's gonna be okay. I have a bolt part way in there to test fit it and it's not touching. But uh, just to let you know, these, uh, uh, oh, I have it pointed, I have the hub kind of pointed forward, so you could rotate it around and those ears um, would be on the front side here instead of the back. Um, but then we've got that third bolt there that uh, probably, probably wouldn't interfere in the back there. So, um, so you've got two options there to rotate it around, but uh, either way, You've got just enough clearance there for that little uh, brake cooling duct eyelet. You don't have to worry about it. All right, here I am test fitting the rotor and the caliper. And the uh, rotor went on just fine. Everything fits just as it should. Caliper fit on just as it should. But hey, here's the importance of test fitting. So um, I hope I have the right caliper here. But if you look very closely, I'm trying to get the light on this 
just right. That's the end of the bolt that holds the caliper on and it is almost touching the inside edge of that brake rotor. So I'm doing a test fit, another test fit, on the uh, big Z51 calipers. I got the 13.6 inch rotor to test out and uh, the rotor fits fine, fits inside the caliper just right. I'm taking a very close look here and um, I'm gonna revise my estimate on the amount of space that's available between the uh, inside barrel of your wheel and the caliper itself. So, uh, I don't know if you can see it uh, right there, that little dark black line on the inside of the barrel is where a little bit of paint has scraped off of the very top corner of the brake caliper um, because I didn't have the wheel bolted down with uh, a couple bolts. I, I, just had, uh, I just had it on with one lug nut so it wasn't centered and it didn't stay in place so it just touched. I think there is approximately um, one millimeter, I'm, and I'm not joking, one millimeter of space from the outside edge of that uh, brake caliper to the inside barrel of the wheel there. Um, so I'm gonna say this is almost too close for comfort. If you had 18s, and I'm gonna have 18s for racing, this would be no problem at all, but with 17s, boy, that's just too close for comfort. You can't even stick, um, you can't even stick a, a, a teeny tiny pebble or a rock uh, inside there, or maybe it would get caught and drag around for a while. All right, I am test fitting the base model Corvette caliper or the J55 Cadillac ATS caliper. It is the smaller one with the 12.6 inch rotor. Um, so let's take a look at clearance here. I've got, I've got my 15 millimeter spacer on, got loads of back spacing behind here. Uh, there's easily, easily enough room for me to put a finger all the way between the barrel of this wheel and the, the caliper. Of course, this Firehawk wheel having a really straight, clean barrel back from the spokes. Some other, other barrels inside wheels might be a little tighter. Uh, let's look at the front spacing here from the spoke to the caliper. Along the outside edge, I can get my finger in there. Maybe that's half an inch or so. But at the tightest spot right in here, oh gosh, I'm gonna say that's like four or five millimeters. But I think that should be enough. Obviously, it's gonna be the same at the top here. This, this is radius right here. So uh, the tightest space is gonna be when the wheel is kinda right next to the edge here. So uh, I don't know, I think that's enough room for for uh, flex and a and, uh, little imperfect wheel uh, mounting, perhaps. I'm gonna go with that. So, let me just pan you back a little bit so you can see how that brake disc fills up the wheel hole and caliper sits in there. Uh, lots of space, everything rolls around pretty easy. And that's the Firehawk wheel. Okay, so I have the stock set of wheels for my 2001 Trans Am. Uh, I'm not sure if these are called speed lines, perhaps, or you just call them stock wheels. So let's look at the spacing here again. I have the spacer on here. So the space from the barrel to the caliper is really ample. I can get my fingers almost in there pretty easily and get my first finger back there. Now this wheel does have a little bit of a hump. You can just kind of see that bright stripe on the video there. That's that inner one. There's just a little hump, just an eighth of an inch or so. And then right here is kind of a sharp hump on these wheels, but that doesn't get anywhere near here. So the front face of the caliper has, I can put my finger almost all the, all the way in there, all the way around. Same thing on the back side uh, up here. If I rotate the caliper just a little bit, um, the tightest part is, is right here on these wheels, but I can still get my finger in there comfortably without getting getting squished. So probably got, you know, almost half an inch there at least. So you could even go with a slightly shorter wheel spacer. Uh, like I said, minus 15. Maybe you could go with a 10 um, if these are the wheels that you want it to run on these. But clearly the stock wheels um, have loads of space behind them. 
with these smaller ATS J55 calipers or otherwise known as the base Corvette C7 caliper. I'll zoom out a little bit here for you so you can see see the whole wheel and the brake disc there. So earlier I showed you that the very tip of the bolt coming through the brake caliper was just about touching the brake disc and I didn't like that. That's not enough clearance for me. So I decided that I was going to uh, add a washer to the uh, in between the uh, bolt uh, head flange and um, the uh, the mounting. Um, so uh, that would just take up that, you know, just a 32nd, a 16th inch of space. Um, and not really affect anything in any negative way. Um, so when I uh, looked on the back side and tried to fit the uh, bolt and the large washer that I got, uh, there is uh, not quite enough space for that particular washer that I purchased. And I saw the, the um, back side wasn't exactly circular. It was a little uh, eccentric because of, I'm going to point out in the video, this uh, angled line on the back of the uh, steering knuckle casting. So I took my Dremel drill and uh, a small cutting wheel and just notched out the uh, backside of the steering knuckle to make enough extra space for the washer. Uh, and the washers I also made eccentric. I stacked a bunch of them together and uh, filed them all down uh, with my power grinder, my uh, Milwaukee tools, can't recommend Milwaukee stuff enough, um, ground a whole bunch of them down so they were eccentric. Even though I did that, I still didn't do it quite enough. Um, so I just had to clearance uh, all four of the holes on the backside of steering knuckles just a little bit with my Dremel tool. And then when I put everything together, uh, everything was nice and flush and enough clearance from the backside um, of the brake rotor and uh, the end of the um, bolt didn't stick out. Here's just a static picture of the 12.6 inch brake rotor and Cadillac caliper together. Using ARP studs and a 15 millimeter spacer you still have about 30 millimeters of uh, teeth on your studs to uh, mount your wheels on. I also wanted to replace my brake hoses while I was at it. Uh, I never want to take chances and I wanted to make sure there was enough room in my brake hose length uh, to fit these new calipers and the uh, stock calipers. Uh, most everybody probably has that hard metal uh, 90 degree angle on the end that goes on the caliper. So I just got a set from Core 3. The uh, Unfortunately the uh, hard line side has a lot more depth on the shank of the shaft than the um, you're looking at uh, a set of, I think it's Earl's uh, brake lines that I got from Jags, which are very similar in size to the stock brake hoses. And the Core 3 has a very long shank on it. So when this was mounted actually onto the car, you can see that the uh, uh, groove where the retaining clip is supposed to go is nowhere behind the back of that bracket so they stick way far out so um, before you go and uh, put those on if having that retaining bracket on the back uh, near your hard line is important uh, make sure that your uh, shank is kind of short there uh, and not extremely long I think I'm gonna fabricate some kind of um, over the back and then over the front u-clip to uh, hold those lines in place with some security but it's just not as secure as uh, having the right size of shank uh, on the back side to make sure that you can fit your clip in where it needs to go. So uh, here is just a still shot of the new Forge Star F14 18 by 11 wheels that I got and you can uh, just see for yourself there there is so much space inside there uh, with the uh, base size calipers there's loads and loads and loads of room it's probably an inch of space and uh, I'm positive if you were using those big Z51 uh, calipers that I was showing you earlier in the video, those would definitely fit under there as well. Um, so no spacing problems with 18-inch wheels for either of those calipers. You can go right ahead and uh, use whichever one you like.